Hi everybody, it's Alan Prost again, continuing on, continuing on with our series of um, PowerPoint presentations delivered to you via video for Module 4 in the um, RESP220 course. All right, This video is for airway pressure release ventilation, and it's a pressure control mode in the mode of IMV. All right, So we allow intermittent mandatory breaths and allow spontaneous breathing between those. All right, So this is a very unique mode and it's only used for a very specialized patient group. All right, In general, this mode is really two levels of pressure. So it's often called two levels of CPAP, constant positive airway pressure. And that's to differentiate it from pressure control ventilation. And it allows spontaneous breathing at each of those pressures, at any time the patient wants to breathe, they can breathe and take a breath. What's interesting about this is that we cycle back and forth between these two levels of high pressure and low pressure, all right, the two levels of CPAP, and the patient breathes irregardless of those two levels that are being achieved in the lungs. So it's, it's a very unique mode of ventilation, and that's why we call it airway pressure release ventilation, because often the inspiratory phase is m very prolonged compared to the expiratory phase. So we actually have a long, a longer periods of time at the high CPAP level than we do at the lower level. All right? We often have inverse I ratios. Okay? So it is considered to be a mode of full ventilatory support, but often it's used with patients that are spontaneously breathing. In fact, it's kind of designed for patients that are spontaneously breathing because it allows them to um, increase their minute ventilation to control their blood gases. All right, This mode is particularly useful for patients who are very difficult to um, oxygenate and we can have very, very high mean airway pressures. And we've talked about the advantages of that before. All right. Generally, it's used for patients with extremely low lung compliance. So often our ARDS or adult respiratory distress group is you um, find some benefit to this. And this would be a severe ARDS patient and patients with high oxygen requirements because we're going to have often very high mean airway pressures with this mode. And so we can help improve oxygenation and whatever lung uh, parts of the lung are healthy, we can optimize the ventilation for those areas. Okay. In theory, it can be difficult to control CO2 with this mode. And its primary focus is oxygenation um, at very low volumes and at high mean airway pressures. But we can control the CO2. Um, on occasion, with some patients that are using a lot, utilizing this mode, we allow permissive hypercapnia. So we can allow much higher CO2 levels than we would normally. And we allow this to occur over a period of time because we want to keep the pH within kind of reasonable levels, probably within certainly greater than 7.25. All right, so we can allow this what we call permissive hypercapnia, where over a period of time we allow the CO2s to rise and we allow the kidneys to kick in and maintain the pH um, over several days to several weeks. All right. So how does it work? Well, we have a time triggering. You notice there's no patient triggering in this mode at all. The patient can, is allowed to spontaneously breathe, all right? But most of these uh, ventilators that use this, it really doesn't synchronize with what the patient, what the ventilator is doing when it's triggering between the two um, pressures. Some um, manufacturers have um, a type of synchronization that can uh, allow some triggering and cycling, but some of them have absolutely none. So we usually state that it's just time triggered, patient triggered uh, for some manufacturers. All right, you'll see why in a moment. All right, it's definitely pressure limited, much like pressure control, but you'll see that we're holding the pressures for um, uh, much longer periods of time and often have uh, dramatically inverse IE ratios. It's always time cycled, it's always pressure limited. All right. So the phase variables, well, we do allow spontaneous breathing at any time during either positive inspiration or during the short expiratory phase. All right. We can, on some manufacturers, even have pressure support to augment the patient's spontaneous breaths during that spontaneous breathing. Okay. And that's, we'll see, I'll show you what that would look like in just a minute. Often, there is no pressure support added. 
and the patient sp simply spontaneously breathing in and around the pressurized cycles of the ventilator. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, you'll see in just a minute. The settings on the ventilator, we set a pressure, a high pressure, all right? And that may be something like, say, 20 centimeters of water pressure. And then we'll set a low pressure, and that could be maybe, say, 5 or 10 centimeters of water pressure. Okay, then we're going to set how much time is at high. And like I said, often we have inverse IE ratios. So this could be even five seconds, and this may be as low as even one or two seconds. All right, so you can see we can have this long, high inspiratory time and a short period of exhalation. That's why it's considered pressure release ventilation, because we only release the pressure for short periods of time. We keep out the higher pressure the P high for longer periods of time. The FiO2 is going to be set depending on what the patient needs. And sometimes we can have pressure support to augment the patient's inspiratory efforts in and around as they're breathing at these two different pressure zones. All right. Well, and of course, then we would have a, a sensitivity set on the ventilator as well. Okay. So this P high and P low are important because they contribute, of course, to our mean airway pressure. But part of that, of course, is how long we can hold that or what IE ratio we have set on the ventilator. So we control our mean airway pressure with these two elements. And that's one of the big focuses of this mode of ventilation is to have rather dramatic and high mean airway pressures. OK, so the advantages. Well, we think we protect the lungs with this mode because we're going to minimize the amount of P high. All right. So the amount of high pressures are going to be dramatically limited, but they're going to be held for a long period of time. And it can even be controversial about what damage this creates in the lungs. But we're going to manipulate the mean airway pressure and the IE ratio to achieve this, this high mean airway pressure that we need for oxygenation and ventilation. OK, so the way it helps ventilation is that we have a lot of recruitment. We don't get atelectasis with this mode, generally speaking, because we keep them at this higher pressure for prolonged periods of time. Helps with oxygenation because we have that higher mean airway pressure. Some of the disadvantages of this is that patients can feel very uncomfortable in this mode and may require to be uh, sedation or to be paralyzed. Now, this is often very negative for a patient. We like them to spontaneously breathe because the spontaneous breathing optimizes ventilation to perfusion and a lot of other positive aspects of spontaneous breathing. But we can do this if the patient's very, very hard to oxygenate and we require, again, this high mean airway pressures. All right. So it can be comfortable and it is very patient specific. All right. It is designed generally to be used with spontaneously breathing patients, but we can and it has been used with patients with no inspiratory effort at all. So, like I was saying here, this is kind of controversial. And this mode is a radical mode of me mechanical ventilation, not widely used and certainly not often used, usually used on patients with dramatically low compliance, such as severe ARDS patients. Okay, so what does it look like? Well, let's take a look at this. What, we've, what we do with this mode is we allow it to cycle between our P high, so here's our P high, and here's our P low, all right? Now notice the high pressures are being held for a long period of time with just short periods of exhalation. That's why it's airway pressure release ventilation and not pressure control ventilation, all right? So we have this prolonged, and that's what really separates it out is that we have very long TIs with very, very short TEs, all right? So pressure release ventilation. We're spending a little bit of time at the low pressures, a lot of time at the high pressure. So when the patient's spontaneously breathing, we allow that to occur in during both the inspiratory and the expiratory phase. So they can spontaneously breathe anytime they want. And you can see here with that long inspiration that they can spontaneously breathe even a couple of breaths in the same positive pressure zone or the time at P high. And then, of course, with the exhalation, we may only have time for one or, two, or maybe even only partial breath at that time. 
So the patient can breathe at any time in the ventilatory cycle. And this is capable because of these new active demand valves. Now what's interesting about this, that we have specific modes that are called airway pressure release ventilation, but some ventilators can actually be manipulated to look exactly like this, just simply in the mode of pressure control set with very with inverse high ratios. All right. So we've specified this to be a unique mode, but you know, it, often it can look very much like pressure control with just very, very long TIs. All right. So that's one of the unusual elements of this. We differentiate it usually by the settings on the ventilator. We have specific P high, P low, T high, T high, and T low. Okay. And of course, all of them, uh, modern ventilators would allow the patient to spontaneously breathe at any time during the inspiratory or the expiratory phase. Okay. So key elements, T high, T low, P high, P low. All right. And of course, allowing this spontaneous breathing. If pressure support was added to this, what would happen is that during this spontaneous breath, all right, the ventilator would go in and augment the pressures to whatever pressure support level you have set. All right. So you could see little jumps in the pressure here because the ventilator will be kicking in with the pressure support. All right. So wherever there's those little instead of having this negative pressure from the patient breathing in, the ventilator would sense that and create a pause an, a high pressure, a high pressure to due to the pressure support setting. Okay, so what the pressure support does, just like with all pressure supports, it would augment the spontaneous breath and increase minute ventilation overall due to these spontaneous breathing efforts. And it can make the ventilator a little bit more comfortable for the patient. So you are going to get some minute ventilation and some CO2 removal with, of course, this drop down to this lower pressures in here. Quite often, um, auto peep is a major factor that's occurring with this ventilation, with this mode of ventilation. So be aware because of the extremely short expiratory time, auto peep is often a factor. And what's interesting about that is that we're okay with that in this mode. Auto peep is not a, an evil with this mode. Often we use it as a way of actually increasing FRC. And in fact, we're sneaking in a little bit of increased mean airway pressure even though we can't measure it directly on the ventilator. Okay, so what's the advantages of pressure release ventilation? Well, it's a way to control, um, it's a lung protective strategy. So we can think of it as lung protection. It allows us to increase PaO2 or decrease oxygen requirements in our patient. All right, so we consider that to be useful. We allow it, um, it can be a comfortable mode for the patient, um, but it allows us to have very, very high mean airway pressures, which of course help us with this oxygenation problem. All right, it's a radical way of ventilating a patient, but it can be used clinically and of course, and most often with patients with really difficult to manage ARDS as an example, um, acute aspiration syndrome is another one. Thank you very much.